Hey guys, welcome back to V101 and today we have an interesting topic and I just watched it. It's Tenki no Ko or Weathering, weathering with You, sorry. And uh, this is something which I was late on. Sid already watched it obviously and he told us both to watch it. And yeah. surprisingly, Audi watched it. Yeah. And uh, finally, for, for the podcast, I had to watch it. I mean, I wasn't planning on watching it really, but I had to. Anyway. Why so, we, wait, wait. Why are we not planning on watching it? Because, Explain. The, because the previous movie made me cry and I didn't want to cry again. So I just wanted to give myself some time to not cry. But ah, you see. made sure that uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. So here we are. I have uh, I finished crying just, a, just like a 15, 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about weathering with you. Sid, you begin because you're the one who has been asking us to watch this. What are your thoughts? Okay, so let me start by talking about the film. So, Weathering With You was Shinkai's film after uh, Your Name or Kimi no Nawa. Came out last year in 2019. Even though we waited for ages to watch it, we finally got to see it this year, like a month ago or so. Because that's when we found it on our, you know, legal streaming websites. Legal yeah. streaming websites. Yeah. So finally watched it. And most people, like... So the thing is, Weathering With You, I would say overall it was a good film. I had a good time watching it. I'd say most people had issues with it. And I, and I think its biggest problem was that the previous film, which is Kimi no Nawa, which I think is Shinkai's best. And that was the biggest problem with Weathering With You because it was a follow-up to this film. Because I think Weathering With You, like story-wise, character-wise, it's more like Shinkai's older works, you know, like six centimeters per second, Gardner Awards. is more like... His, it's more like his older work and like Kimi no Nawa is like something different and standoutish that he did. So I think whether I think whether with this nice like individual film if you see it on see it on its own. And it I think it was a nice experience. I think he actually showed the weather in a beautiful way. We talk about, we'll talk about the characters yeah, and you're everything taking in detail. Too long. No, yeah. But Audi. overall I had a good experience. Yeah. Okay, you had a good experience. Audi. Mm. More to his style. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sid, when did you watch it? I saw it, I think, um, two months ago. Do you remember everything? Yeah, I remember everything. Okay, Audi, when did you watch it and then give your thoughts? I think I watched it around a week or two back. I still, I still remember most of it. You watched it a week or two back? Oh, okay. I thought you watched it like pretty much mm -hmm. after, right after Sid. Uh, I watched it, uh, I think, around a week or two back. And I didn't hear what you said right now. So, Bru was saying if you... Uh, Bruce said he thought you he was he thought you watched it a while ago, not just a few weeks ago, like after me. No, I didn't watch it. I watched it two weeks back. Uh, Bruce mm -hmm. was very insistent on me watching the movie for a long while mm -hmm. as well, but then I put it off. And I think just one or two weeks back, I decided I'd get up and just watch this movie. Around the time you started the whole idea of this podcast, I figured I'd also watch this movie alongside whatever it is whatever manga and anime I was uh, hmm. consuming. And what are your thoughts? Uh, so Sid, you were saying that it was more closer to his older films, right? Would you say yeah. it was more closer to his original style and that people are not so ready for that style, which is why it was received much poorly compared to Kinonawa? I wouldn't say it was received poorly. It still, it still broke like box office in like two, three days after release. It was aired in like some... 140 to 180 countries. It still did like a. It, it's the first Japanese film that year that was actually nominated for the Oscar. So it did pretty well on its own. But if you're talking about like his storytelling style, specifically what I'm talking about, because his visual style keeps in, increasing and improving, right? Hmm. But if you talk about his storytelling style, I think it's more like towards his older films. Ah. Yeah. Personally, I thought, uh, well, after having watched Kimi no Nawa, I thought it, there was some standard to be there was some standard that it had to reach and I didn't think that the movie reached that standard so I didn't like it as much. Obviously, the visuals are mm -hmm. mind-blowing as ever but then story, I felt kind of a bit lost. I did like the fact that the movie was based on a very loosely based on religion. The whole, okay, again, uh, the podcast will have a lot of spoilers so spoiler warning from now onwards. Uh, yeah, so the whole the whole story is based on the the fact that Hina, the heroine of the story, is supposed to be a weather maiden, and that she is, <clears throat> she she controls the weather of that city, right? And 
I, I don't know. I have not looked up too much about on the mythology of this, but I do like the fact that there. I know that dragons are supposed to be a very auspicious character in Japanese mythology, Japanese folklore, and I kind of like the fact that it was rolling around that territory, and it made me want to explore Japanese mythology even more. Again, I I have not looked too much into it, so I don't know as mm-hmm. much, but. It was very interesting that it, that was the angle he chose with this, because Kimi no yeah. was very. It was set in reality as such, but yes, reality, mm, of course, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but it had, but it had a very large fantasy curve to it, whereas Tenki no Ko was more so fantasy than reality, with the whole. Yes, indeed. Yeah, of course, sir. Yeah, right. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Like how Audi sees the. <laughs> <laughs> you know mythology in Tenki no Ko, but not in Kimi no Nawa. Yeah, I'd say both are equally supernatural to yeah. an extent, but in different ways. You know, I, I think Kimi no Nawa might be even more supernatural because in Tenki no Ko you have a very set definition of what can happen. Yeah, while yeah. Kimi no Nawa is just like balls to the wind, and you can anything can happen. Exactly, and I think uh, what Audi is referring to is specifically like you know, I think he's thinking about the spoilers, the cloud scene, that yeah. part of the yeah. film, yeah. which I think seemed too supernatural to him. Yeah, <laughs> but I think parallel worlds and intersecting timelines right now are pretty supernatural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I liked it. I liked the movie mm-hmm. much more than I thought I would, and I think. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I I would say I wouldn't say it's better than Kimi no Nawa, but I wouldn't say Kimi no Nawa is better either. Yeah, I think both of them are pretty equal in my eyes right mm-hmm. now because, well, you know me, I love Kimi no Nawa. Don't get me wrong. Of course, I do have I do have a few problems with weathering with you that I'm not completely happy with, but mm-hmm. overall, I think the movie really stood up to. Kimi no Nawa. I think I think it met that expectation. I don't know why Audi thinks yeah. it didn't. He did a really good can... job with the story mm-hmm. and the visual style for the movie. Yeah. I don't know personal opinion. I just didn't feel that into it. Don't hide behind personal opinion. We <laughs> shall get to it and make you feel bad. Okay. Yeah. Also, also, I think you all know this, but I was outside when this happened. But it was the first. Japanese animated film to be officially released in India. What? Oh. Oh. It was officially released in India in theaters. So, like these bun- these high schoolers in India, they started a petition for his next film to be released because everyone loved Your Name, and they said we only watch it online. You know, wow. Like how like how the three of us did. Yeah. And I think it got around fifty thousand like vote signs or something on the petition. Wow. And because of that, the producer and Shinkai released it in India. It was the first Japanese movie. Can you imagine? Wow. That's really good. That's a pretty good movie for yeah. to enter the Indian. It's crazy. Maybe and he Bollywood will learn something from this. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he officially came to Delhi for the screening and in, and gave an interview. And he didn't meet me. I know, right? It happened in September 2019. <laughs> Hey, it's my birth month. I'm sorry that I I edited that out. Too much personal details. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, too much. <laughs> But yeah, okay. Well, don't. What do you? Don't fit? send gifts. Yeah, what? Hey, please send gifts. I don't mind gifts. <laughs> no. Gifts from Weebs, like anime stuff. I would love it. Thank you very much. Uh, I, will, I will reveal my address. Yeah, soon. Yeah, <laughs> in code. Uh-huh. But yeah, okay. What do you guys think of the story? And now we shall just a spoiler alert for you guys. We are going to start dissecting Audi's opinions and. Make him wonder why he joined this podcast at all. <laughs> Sid. Yeah, so I think I think the story is pretty. I think it's a pretty good story, but I want to talk about it in parts because I like. I think Kimi no Nawa is basically based on like I think weather and nature and like our situation right now with the world and how it's basically it's like a exaggeration, a personification of weather of how it's. You. you said Kimi no Nawa. Oh. My bad, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I say random things, but yeah, thank you, Noko. Yeah, so basically, like I think even Makoto Shinkai said he was watching over the years that Japan in summer was having more rain, more rain. Yeah. And I think the in 2019 when released, it had like its cloudiest day in like some hundred and something years. I don't know the exact details. Mm. So, and the most amount of rainfall it had that year, and increasingly rain is increasing in Japan over there, and. I think because of that, many people like even right now. If you see the 
Masaki Iwasa, he released uh, Japan Sing Strain 20. I think that's based on similar concepts, which is very scary if you'll have seen the Netflix uh, I show. I have not. Yeah, but it's basically about Japan sinking with this huge tsunami and earthquake. And I think these themes are coming up more now because of the reality and what's happening. And I think Yuasa also wanted to show that because he said, but he's also, Tenkinoko is already based on a light novel he had written before. So mm. he just turned it into a film now. So he, and he, he, he thought he saw, the, he saw this as a perfect chance to show that. Hmm. And if we only, if we, that's like the base concept. But even if we talk about the whole story, I think it's really interesting this time because like the two characters in this universe, they actually like meet each other. If you see Kimi no Nawa, of course, you, there will be comparisons to Kimi no Nawa because these are his two big films. Yeah, I, no, so, I think we should save the comparison for later. Like we'll, let's just talk about Tenkinoko okay. as its own film, as its own story, so that mm-hmm. we can uh, you know discuss it a bit more before yeah. we start comparing it. So I think the the characters here are like I think if we talk about the guy uh, what's his name uh, uh, Hodaka. Hodaka Hodaka so I think Hodaka's character is really name. I forgot the name yeah sorry yeah, yeah I think it's Hodaka and Hina yeah. yeah so Hodaka's character was really interesting and strange to me at the same time because he does he does some very very questionable things like you know the scene with the gun and even in the end like spoilers when he goes to save her when he's trying to save her trying to go to the shrine like I would say his actions are quite questionable yeah. these are things we've never seen in like uh, Shinkai's movies before like it's I wouldn't say it's very dark but it's a darker side to his stories yeah which is something new which which I accept is like pretty interesting I would say I I liked it. But the thing I love most about the story is how it highlighted Tokyo. I think the city itself was highlighted beautifully in the story. Like even the, the bright and the dark sides of Tokyo were shown pretty well, which is like a first for him, I think. And even the relations they have with all the characters, you know, like uh, him coming for like, from like a small island in Tokyo to like working here in the big city with these with those two guys, you know, right in the writing agency. And then, and then meeting this, and then meeting this girl at a McDonald's nearby, and then following her. I think, I think he tried to, I think he like the young romance theme that he likes to go with. I think he pulled that off pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, and I think at, at least this film has a has a proper happy ending, which is more like his previous films. Like I said. Yeah, I thought this guy was famous for having like twists with really dark stuff at the end. Yeah, but that's new. Like, his older stuff always has, like, you know, like, the most... Like, if, if you see something like six centimeters per second, that is, like, a very, like, nice, happy ending. I thought Garden of Words, was it? Garden of Words was... Had twists, but it was, like, if you watch it, I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'd still say it was still a happy ending. Oh, yeah. okay. But it was an unexpected happy ending. So, there was and a twist, it. just not the one we expected? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Audi, what did you think? Uh, like I said, the religion angle of the story was really nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, as Sid said, that he tried, he tried to show the. I, actually, I like the fact that the story showed a lot of what middle class life would look like in Japan. It, I've never. I, <laughs> the things I've seen so far, I don't think I've seen anything that has properly shown what middle class life would look like. And this is a good outlet as such. And I don't know, the story was... Fuck. Story... <laughs> so what did you think of it? Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. I'm what did not... you like about it? I'm not one for romance type of movies. I, it was just feel good overall. Yeah, that's usually how slice of life goes. But yeah. you said there were some things you also didn't enjoy about it. Can you like talk about those? I don't know. I think when I was watching the movie, I was trying to compare it way too much to Kimi no Nawa. And I, pro- I think I made the mistake of not watching it as its own movie. I, mm-hmm. I guess I was too focused on that benchmark. You know, I didn't... <clears throat> I didn't see it for what it yeah, was. But what do you think didn't reach the benchmark? Uh, too much un- uh, too much unnecessary drama. Hmm? Like what? 
I think towards the end there was like a scene. There was the whole the chase scene mm-hmm. where uh, Hodaka gets caught in the police station, and then he just he sets out on a whim. You know, it, there is no explanation, and every, he just runs. He just runs for uh, just to find this girl without even knowing if there was a chance of chance of get, finding her. And towards the end, it was just a standoff. There was no. Uh, Kimino Nawa probably had this the, that magical moment on top of the mountain where they finally meet, and then you know the Miami Zoo, Miami. She she just disappears away, and that and that twist kind of pulls us away from the the ending of sorts. Mm-hmm. Whereas here it's just a regular standoff, which I kind of felt was a bit too much, and then they just ended the way you know he was supposed to go through the gate, and. Uh, who was who was the guy that that uh, takes Hodaka in when he first enters Tokyo? Keisuke. Suga. Keisuke, huh? Mm. So he he was he was into this whole thing. He he knew what a sunshine girl was. He knew what the whole deal with uh, Hodaka was. Yet somehow it turned out to be that you know he was just an average adult at the end of the day, and he didn't want to just. push him and you know kind of block him block off the way for everyone else it took like a really big push from uh, from the story where he was everyone was cornered and hodaka had no other option but to just uh, sorry kesuke had no other option but to just push hodaka to the finish and i felt mm. that it was a bit unnecessary i think you misunderstood the scene quite a lot how so mm. the hoda suga didn't want to let hodaka go through even at the end he didn't want him to go through he was on the police side he said stop go back to the station and it's yeah. when it's when uh hodaka says that he wants to see her at least one more time that line is very important because that line reminds him of so he they've already shown in the movie how uh, hodaka reminds suga of himself when he was younger mm-hmm. and then he and then he realizes that he's chasing after a woman who was gone which is what happened to suga in the first place his his wife died So when he says, "I want to see her one more time," that's what changes Suga's heart because he's because he can understand exactly what it means to want to see someone one more time. Exactly that desperation with that call that clutches you when you want that to happen. That's why he supports him in the end. Yeah. Till then, he's against him going. I think I agree with Bru because even even before like the three, Hodaka did like Suga didn't want to do it in the beginning like because. he wanted to also see his child right which yeah. he was like with even that was a little there was a big situation for him so he didn't want to sacrifice that for hodaka yeah so i think even that adds on to why he actually didn't want to help him in the first place yeah. mm. but i'm saying irrespective of why he didn't yeah. want to help him before he he changed yeah. because of this yeah. line that he says mm. and what he what else sorry what else did you not like i think that was about it uh, just a bit it was just it was nice to up till the ending where it, where the action just seemed a bit too unnecessary i like the the pace at which it at which it was going up until the end where you know it was just a mexican stand off and then i was like okay this seems to be like the ending to any action movie what it was in <laughs> okay that wasn't the ending that, that a lot happens after that oh ah, yeah but it kind of it it was jarring to say the least okay well what anything else any other comparisons to kimino now you want to make uh, can we talk about the the cameos no, which hold, on, hold on i want i just want audi to think of what else he didn't like okay, okay. because he was thinking of kimino now yeah hello yeah hello yeah uh-huh. can you do you have any other examples of what you didn't like and the, which you liked in kimi no nawa but didn't find in this one uh no i i don't think there was much much to dislike between the two movies this is just the only thing that i found was a bit unnecessary again hmm. i didn't i didn't i don't hate the movie as such it was it was a pretty good movie in the end although and even though i'm not into romance movies that much it is overall a nice watch hmm so yeah just mm-hmm. just one uh one of one complaint you could say that i had from the movie no other complaints huh no other complaints it, it's interesting 
I would again, like you said, I wouldn't put both of them in like first or second place. Each of them have their own place in the movie world. As such, it sounds like you're putting Kimi no Nawa straight up first, dude. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got a fan boy over here, <laughs> and it's yep, me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well. But yeah. No, I think the story the story was written well that they mm-hmm. they they showed a lot of you know a lot of things the coincidence is one thing that was used a lot because there's a lot of coincidences that happen in the movie yeah and then it's and I want I have no problem at all with the whole way mm-hmm. the story went except for a couple of things one is they should have showed the audience not not hadoka we just what hodaka hodaka sorry they should have showed the audience and not hodaka that her body was disappearing little by little i mean we already understood that we already knew that she was going to disappear mm-hmm. but they didn't they could have been a little more visual about it is what i think they showed a very small amount on her left arm and it went away afterwards so your led to believe that you know okay it's like not that big a problem but if they showed it a little more instead of just talking about it at the end where she takes off her robes and shows that she has yeah. no torso so if they'd shown it in some way maybe just her checking her stomach or something like that i think it would have added on to the film a little bit more because there it you you start understanding the seriousness of it earlier on i think it's the whole well, link with the weather maiden and the sky that whole uh, i think very early on in the movie they show fish or water fish sort of hanging around on the ground or in various other places across the city yeah and that was probably one way of them showing that you know the link was breaking with the weather maiden and soon enough she will be lifted off but no. then mm-hmm. i don't know it it probably feels like a second watch sort of thing something that you would not notice on a second watch <clears throat> no, no. Uh, i would say more like like i think what the thing is like would don't you think it be it's it has more of an impact if they show it later in like a bigger way like they show it earlier because if we compare it to like characters vanishing we think of like spirit away right yeah where she where you see her vanishing right in the beginning of the yeah. film and you know like cuz that she is and that's her mission but here in this case you're just thinking about how she's you see the thunder clouds you see the rain increasing as yeah. she's helping people you see the situation get worse so you know something is coming like But and then you realize that she's she kind of is like sacrificing herself for the cause, yeah. which is the point of the film. And like in the end, I think ho- like we like the audience and Hodaka like realizes the same thing at the same time, like just the same impact. No, we don't though. That's what I'm saying. We we don't have the impact the same time that Hodaka does. We, no, but we like, get that impact a lot earlier. Her, but her removing her robes and oh, showing that, the yeah, whole, yeah. whole body—that's a bigger impact than showing the small thing, right? Yeah. I, I still think if if they'd shown parts of her arm arms mm-hmm. or legs disappearing, and then she checks something like a part of her stomach disappearing, mm-hmm. and then they reveal that the whole thing, it still it would have made it a lot more dire because the way they were showing it, it was like small this thing, right? They only showed her arm once. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying they should have shown the body, the robe part in any other way. I'm saying they should have given more hints and clues as to what was happening and how much was disappearing. because that way when we actually see the robes being taken off we are like holy shit that's a lot more than i expected i thought it was only here but it's everywhere but ra- but you you still said holy shit when you yeah, saw it but like, then it, but then that's because i noticed it early on and i was like why aren't they showing it it must it, like i don't know how bad it is so yeah. when, when the scene happened i wasn't thinking holy shit as much as I was like ah okay they showed okay, it okay i see yeah, so yeah, it yeah. took away that took away from that scene i wanted mm-hmm. to be surprised at that scene But then she was hiding it so much. You knew something bad had happened. So if they'd yeah, shown yeah. it instead of her hiding it, then you'd you'd be settled in that false sense of security. You know, like yes, it's it's okay. It's just an arm. Something's happening. It can be fixed. And then they show the whole thing. That time you're shocked. Up. You're like, wow. Okay, I didn't expect that. But in the way they showed it, I was like, oh, I could make <laughs> <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> I understand your point. Yeah, it makes more sense now. Yeah. Yeah, that was one thing, and. This, mm-hmm. The second thing that I had a problem with was I don't remember. Hold on, what was I? I I thought of my first point so much I forgot my second point. 
yeah the story gave gave them ba- what gave back the protagonists whatever they wanted a little too easily and this is not a this is not a in universe problem it's just a problem i have with the way the story was being told which is you have you have the high risk for uh, yeah. hina she takes the high risk but you don't have a similar type of high risk for this guy khuda ka so it's more of you I mean, we know that he's going to go to the shrine and do something to try saving her but mm-hmm. we we have no idea of the consequences of if it doesn't work out well the consequences are that she's she'll never come back she'll never return right yeah but are there any consequences to him so no so he personally does not have any he's just in love right and he yeah, so that's that's, that's, he has his issues like the police are behind him like he cuz he's like he ran away from his hometown and in the end he gets sent back there to complete his schooling and all that you know he has he lives in like a manga cafe in the beginning like yeah. he still has his own problems like trying to so live here illegally so to say as a student and like then he gets caught with a gun and everything so he, he still has his own issues but like i don't think since the story is about like her sacrificing herself and him like trying to save her I think it's more about that than him having bad consequences because she's the one who's having the bad consequences. He's like the savior, you know. It's like the, like it's like a Cinderella story or like a like the classic Disney fairy tales, you know. Yeah, but I didn't like that aspect so much at all, and mm-hmm. I think it's a story problem because he could have tackled it in different ways. He could have made it harder for him to bring her back. So even if you look at uh, as the as you said comparison to Kimi no Nawa, in yeah. Kimi no Nawa. Taki had to go through a whole lot of shit just to reach the spot where he could have saved her, and then go through a whole lot of shit afterwards again to eventually, possibly meet her. Mm-hmm. But here, he just goes to the same shrine, prays to the same god, and suddenly they're just back. So that you know that emotional scene building up to getting the other person back was not as well done. It's still it's still good. I'm not saying yeah, it's bad. Yeah. I'm saying it wasn't as well thought of as it was in Kimi no Nawa because Kimi no Nawa really made your made your heart just one sec. Mm-hmm. My dog is whining a little too much. Can you hear him? <laughs> yeah, I can I hear something, it. but it's okay. <laughs> Hopes not. He's stuck. Yeah, I so, think I I agree. Like I agree with that part. Like because. with all this build up and everything that happened in the last half of kimura with the ending like, the ending like just hits you right yeah. and i yeah. think the ending for tenkinoko was it as much as of a hit like it didn't like hurt you you know in that way it didn't like make you weep yeah. but it was emotional but yeah i agree it didn't have the same impact as oh. kimura now of course third point huh. yeah that fucker <laughs> what that did fucker. he do <laughs> gave such a an- proper closure for this movie where they both meet and they're like it's going to be all right yeah. <laughs> and he just left us hanging with kimino nawa he is the oh, i'm sorry your name is that. and then I, and, and then I'm, i'm just sitting there like hey hey your name is what huh? what is your name <laughs> i i was so if we talk about can we talk about the cameos because yes, it ties into this we can talk about this. the cameos so or you didn't notice the taki and mitsuha cameo yeah, yeah. did you notice What? it at first you yeah. did it was it was so obvious, obvious. Yeah. <laughs> okay see i didn't notice it the first time because i was too engrossed into the movie I, was like, I was engrossed into the movie and i stopped and was like what am i watching <laughs> but then she was, she was like did you not notice the cameos like ah oh, what cameos <laughs> oh, it's from your uh, this thing. Your name. I'm like, oh, what? And I just scrolled back through the movie to the points he pointed out. I was like, ah, there they are. But again, I, I don't know. It, I felt like I, I didn't notice it the first time. Obviously. How? How could you not notice it? Is my question. Uh, I suppose it easily slipped past me. How? I have no idea. Like oh, after after <laughs> rewatching the second time, I was like, ah, ah, <clears throat> they're there. How the hell did I not watch it like just fifteen minutes ago? Yeah, it's pretty cool. And also, if we talk about that, right? I think I'll give Bru more closure here. Hold on, because... hold on. Okay, okay. Audi, mm. did you watch the movie? <laughs> watch the movie, don't worry. <laughs> I watched the movie. Oh, somehow... Okay, the the uh, Mitsuha thing was suppose was more obvious, but I didn't. 
the taki thing was more obvious funny he thought you had no idea me so i was there you're like taki and okay, after i said when yeah. taki was there like, oh, that makes sense yeah. but me so you're like what i had no idea like, see the, when i saw the grandson i was like i have i have definitely seen that character somewhere before but when i saw mm. the, the jeweler's accountant or the seller over there that that was completely lost on me i did i Later on, when I saw it, her name was also there on. Yeah. The tag it is like ah, that is what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just slipped past me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not very, a true fan of the role. Not when one that is very good at finding cameos. Mm-hmm. Cameos really, they're literally in front of your face. Yeah, I know, I know, but still, it's also. Another thing I want to say. So when he wrote the right, the light novel, right? He talked about this bro. Yeah. He writes when they go to the grandmother's house. Yeah. There's a picture saying my grandson's wedding. Mm. But he didn't show that in the movie. He wanted to show it using a cameo. So that means officially, according to canon, they get married. No, here, see, here <laughs> is where you're wrong because I read up about this as well. Okay. It's in the light novel. Okay, listen to me. This yeah. is what this is okay, also okay. based on what he said. Yeah. He said that yes, it is a yeah. cameo, and yeah. you dog, shut up. <laughs> yeah, it is a cameo, and he also confirmed that the events of your name were in the mm-hmm. middle of happening while weathering with you yeah. happened. So that means Taki was still in his college, right? Mm-hmm. And Mitsuha had come to Tokyo after her town died. Yeah. So she was she was she was working there. Wait one second. I confused myself with this whole thing. Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. basically the end of the end of uh, this thing. Your name should have happened mm-hmm. at 2021 because he the, because uh, Shinkai said that uh, weathering with you is based on 2021. That's where. Yeah, it ends. but but they're already married here, right? No, because... they're not. That's what. So so what he's what the idea is that yeah. the timelines don't match up. The timelines don't match up because also of the of the. What happens after the movie, and because it's not raining in Kimura, yeah, yeah. and, and then he said, "I don't care about flooded. the timeline." Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, "Hey, <laughs> are you just, are you like really fucking with us right now? Like you 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 intentionally say that he is still in college. He's still wearing the same color yeah, yeah, clothes. Exactly. He's that means he's still studying, mm-hmm. which means he hasn't met Mitsuha yet, so they can't be married." And then he said, "I don't care about timelines. Like, yo, your entire movie was based on a timeline <laughs> difference." He he also said that I, he said I think you all say also you are talking about different timelines and because of the cameos here. But now I now I flooded Japan, so who knows what will happen in the future? We'll have to wait and see. My God. <laughs> yeah. And then he said, "I don't care about it." <laughs> so they are they are not married. No, but in the light novel, I'm saying he does get them married because it's written there. Okay. So maybe he changed it for this. Yeah. Fine. If I read the light night lo- light novel, I shall. <laughs> yes. Take a look at also, that. Also, he's apparently even I didn't notice this. Okay. Yeah. Because I had watched it a long time ago. Apparently, even Kimi no Nawa has cameos from his from old the, movies. Yeah. Yeah. The teacher from the teacher, uh, yeah. Garden of Words is their teacher yeah. in this thing. I had no idea, and even in the last scene, they show the guy. Uh, what's his name? Takao. Yeah. Who's Takao? The the guy from Garden of Words. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yep, yep. He, show, he has a lot of cameos, like words. Yep, yep. Combining between each other, it's very interesting. Yeah. And then he said he doesn't care about the timelines. <laughs> Does he's gonna come up with another movie? Let's see. Man, more if he messes with messes with more Kimi no Nawa lore, I swear to God, I'm going to find him and I'm going to hit him at least six hundred dollars. Like, six dollars. Chill out. Thankfully, you weren't in Delhi when he came. Back. I know, right? <laughs> After the movie, I would have gone to him and been like, "What happened to them? <laughs> They can't do me like this, okay? I need to know that Taki and Mitsu are fine. They are, you know, you know. I don't, I don't use this word a lot, but. Actually, I don't use it at all, but I ship those two. Okay, I'm oh I'm completely God. invested in their story. <laughs> this is the first time I've heard you use that word. Exactly, that's how serious <laughs> this is. I'm just saying, those mm-hmm. the cameos took too much emotional 
charge of my brain yeah the cameos were pretty unexpected and exciting see the worst part was right when when it, when, the, when taki comes out talking is like hey, hey grandmother hey what's yeah. up it's just me <laughs> and i was just sitting there like is it him am i yeah. dreaming this side i was like am i watching the wrong movie is this like some yeah. intentional scene put in just to fuck with people and i was so confused i was like i that couldn't have been him i'm just looking into it i'm just stretching things too far and then i google it i'm like ah it is them yes and yeah exactly when you see takio like so where's mitsuha maybe they'll show mitsuha they see i know this mitsuha yeah i yeah. noticed mitsuha like, immediately mitsuha. Yeah. yeah instantly you notice yeah. her yeah I think the second I saw Mitsuha, mm-hmm. the second the second time I saw Mitsuha, the, all the features were there, especially the, mm-hmm. the famous the red headband. Or oh, then I, then I'm like ah, that, that, that's her right there. That, that, uh, did they use the same voice actors? Because I felt like the Mitsuha uh, voice was what got me to. I I know for a fact. I think the the boy uh, Taki, his voice acting mm-hmm. was uh, changed between. Yeah. The, in the whole scene, there were at mm-hmm. least two voice actors. The, when they first introduced him, his voice was a bit deeper, but then. towards the end i think they used the same voice actor from the movie as well yeah uh, it felt a bit odd i heard about the casting it was a big thing like there were around 4000 voice actors auditioning for this Ooh, wow. casting was a big deal they had to narrow it down to like these two lucky <laughs> <laughs> cast but it was a, it was a huge deal apparently yeah definitely wow. makes sense Mm-hmm. But I don't know the Mitsuha Mitsuha scene. The, uh, the voice immediately got me looking. I was like, "That's her, isn't it?" <laughs> Some creepy stalker who is looking out for someone like that. Yes, her. yes, that's her. She's here. Yes. Hmm. And I was like, But it's oh, a telling shit, ha? Huh? Yeah. Working part time probably. Even I thought the same thing first that she's working part time. Yeah. In the beginning when I watched it, I thought it was before both of them met. But later on, after I I read the thing about them getting married, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but that's the thing. This guy hasn't graduated college yet, so there can't be. Yeah, yeah. He changed Makes it. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. He changed it for this. What oh, because he's still in his early twenties. I get my hands on him. <laughs> What if the lady just had another grandson who looked exactly the same? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. What Mitsuha's mind was going into two different people's bodies now? Oh, who knows? He doesn't care about timelines. Hey, don't jinx it. Mm-hmm. If you come yeah. and destroy Kimi no Nawa, or now bothering with you away from me, or you, you are, you'll be in for a world of pain. Mm-hmm. Take you that, take that gun that this guy finds, and he'll shoot your head with it and miss. <laughs> My God, quite a threat, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it. Uh, uh, what? Uh, what are the guy's name? The criminal who was uh, arrested for possessing a large number of firearms. Huh? <laughs> Oh, I don't. Oh, in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, Shibata. Shibata. Yeah, Shibata, your ass, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. My God. Anyway, let's all take a deep breath. Let out all the emotions. Are you done? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Which And we continue on yeah. to the next. What What characters did you guys like the most? I liked. Uh, I think this this time, like I think last time, I like the main. This time, I like the main characters, but I also like the the I like Suga and uh, Natsumi a lot. Yep, yep. They were very interesting characters, especially yep. like because we got more insight into their own lives and how they're living, and yeah. like the whole first part when uh, Hos- Hodaka, I keep <laughs> messing up his name, when Hodaka is like living in Tokyo with them, you know, and like working there, you get to see a lot. I think, and even in the end when they come to save him, like Natsumi drives him, you know, to to the building, and even this guy, even uh, Suga helps her a lot. I think those two characters are really cool. I think they stand out a lot for me, even Adi. though I like Hina and Hodaka a lot. Yeah, that's what I was. Adi, I was gonna say I liked. Uh... Well, I also I was also going to say I like the other two characters, the uh, Suga and Natsumi. I like Natsumi more in this. She seemed to really help out uh, Hodaka's character a lot in the throughout the movie, and she really showed her true wild side towards the end of the movie as well. Uh, so other than other than that, I <coughs> I didn't like. Uh, I like those those two characters the most. <laughs> 
Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> also, you hmm. both failed. Just saying, you failed. Hmm. Your favorite character should have been Mitsu and Taki, but no, nobody mentioned my them. My God, they were not my favorite character from the film. My God, I how? Say that outright. How could you? <laughs> I want to know what happened to them. Is that your honest opinion? Are you ending it there? Those were your favorite characters yeah. from the whole film? My god. We have this on record. Yeah. No, actually, that hurts. <laughs> nothing with you had nice characters. Like I feel like I feel like he, the, he, he addressed one of the points we made it in our uh, Kimi no Nawa podcast, which you guys should go check out right now. Yeah. Please. Uh, one of our points was that the side characters were not really memorable because they didn't really do much. They they were just there mm-hmm. like fodder. While here, I think he's I think he's fixed that by giving all the surrounding characters a lot more life. Yeah, and not just not just the characters who play in their main lives, like everybody, mm-hmm. the people who they work for, everything. They just give it a lot more. He's given it a lot more life, which I think is a very good decision to make. I think he definitely beats Kimi no Nawa in that aspect. Yeah, definitely. Because I it, think he also he also said that when when before making this film, he like he saw the criticisms because he said he reads a lot of criticism. So he saw what people said about Kimi no Nawa, and he took those weak points and made Tenki no Ko to improve upon it. Yeah. So I think you can see that pretty yeah, well. Yeah, that, that you can see it pretty well. <laughs> and what what about the I don't know about is is that. Is that how Tokyo actually looks? Uh, did he, did yeah. he take all the reference shots for Tokyo and recreate them in the same way he did with Kimi no Nawa? Yeah, definitely. He did the exact same thing. And what's cooler is, like, so the main part, like the first part of the movie, it's shot in the entertainment district of Tokyo, which is Kabukicho. Okay. So, like, the manga cafe where Taki is, you know? Yeah. It's, you, it's, it's, you can find it there. And if you go around the corner, you'll find, like, a McDonald's, mm-hmm. which is there. And like you find the hotel where he shot the gun, the same hotel, hotel Serio, like yeah. the exact name. Like you walk around the whole neighborhood, and that's where the film took place. Wow. You can literally walk around Kabukicho. Wow! Even when they ran from the from the what's his name, uh, the shady character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when yeah. when they ran from him in the entertainment district, all those places, exactly the same neighborhood. It's like he went walking around in with the. <laughs> They shot around that day. Even the building where the shrine was, yeah. it's like this building that was like, I think it was destroyed last year sometime. Okay. But it was this old abandoned building. And he just, and apparently it was raining. He was walking and he saw the building and he was like, what if there was a shrine there and in this heavy rain, like a ray of light show, like shone down there and there was a ma- made shrine made in there. He just thought of that while walking around a pandemic. That's, rainy what, he made, one that's day. what he based the story on, huh? Yeah. And you can go inside the like you could go inside the building that time, but you couldn't get to the roof. Hmm. But it was you could see the ruins and all were inspired by that. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore because it was like an old torn down building. But yeah, that's, it's pretty cool how he uses real life locations. I think that's a that's a very unique thing that he does. See, that's why friends. he didn't make them reunite in the building. He made them reunite <laughs> in another place, which is also <laughs> exactly. real life. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense now. Yes, maybe the building was broken down. Is it is it well, true that Japan is actually going to sink in the future? Hmm? Is it true that Japan uh, will, or is it more true that Japan? I don't know about that. Land, reclaim land, more so. I think you can sharing the link, and you all can see if you'll see every location that they walk around is an actual place, which is so interesting. Like you'll see the big view that she sees, you know, the when she's acting as the Hario and she's clearing the sky. You get a big view of Tokyo. Yeah. That's the observation deck at like Roppongi Hills. It's one of the most popular oh, places to get a view of Tokyo from. She goes, you see the Shibuya crossing, of course. In the end, you know that that's a popular place. Even the it's crazy. Even the place the police catches them. It's near the popular. It's near. It's near a ramen shop near the Godzilla statue. So he shows real Damn. life locations, which is pretty cool. Damn. Yeah. Even the snacks, dude. The snacks that uh, Hina uses, the Nissin chicken ramen, yeah, Nissin yeah, yeah. Oh my God. and the seaweed and salt potato yeah. chips, they're real. Yeah, yeah. And you can actually find the recipes online of the rice dish and the chips dish that she, the ramen dish yeah. that she makes. Yeah. Was this movie sponsored or 
was a lot of sponsors yeah because i saw big names like pepsi and obviously mm-hmm. mcdonald's and everything has come up in the movie and i was wondering i was i was very pleasantly shocked at how well they recreated the mcdonald's look and feel yeah, inside the movie it felt like you were in a mcdonald's, McDonald's sitting right yeah. there and looking at what was going on yeah like i saw that i saw the you know the drawings they have the little art they have in mcdonald's to show you their new offer it was spot on like it was i, I would if, if someone had shown me only that i would have been like that's a real mcdonald's ad i know right they should just clip that and like yeah, and sell it as a commercial it, yeah. that combined with the usual dull yellow lighting from mcdonald's it just worked out It looks it looks almost the same and the and the box was really well done mm-hmm. yeah the box the was like box crazy was really well done huh? yeah but it was i think i think it was very well made i think he uses real life locations in a beautiful way yeah yeah i also the think the streets of tokyo that's why i think i was saying he brought like tokyo to life you know like i like i fell in love more with tokyo than before yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. I, i also think that he has improved on the anime i mean you have a monologue of course Yeah but I also think he improved on the animation mm-hmm. what well, like I wouldn't say style I think like you know we were talking about it in the Kimino Nawa podcast about how yeah. the animation was not the greatest but it was really mm-hmm. good I think yeah. I think there's a clear difference in animation uh in between these two movies where I feel like weathering with you has, has a lot more small details in animation it's, it's exactly reminds me of uh, the thing you told me about Miyazaki where he if he gives details to those who, like if you before you we are leaving you tap your shoes on the ground yeah yeah like exactly that. i i could mm-hmm. i could notice a lot more stuff like that while watching weathering with you which i think he's yeah. i think his animation has improved overall i agree i agree i think his animation has improved a lot like uh, i'll talk about it in detail yeah, yeah we should, but we shall get pretty, to your monologue yeah. but before also, that yeah you tell i would me. also like to talk about like you know the the references and the history according to like weather and all you know even that was pretty interesting how yeah. we showed the so you have two monologues okay you going to get to talk about animation this time you get to talk about all this yes they can go yeah so i would like to talk about the little things he saw hanging of the umbrella and the thing his brother was dressing as yeah it's called a teru teru bozu okay yeah so teru basically means like shining or like sunlight and bozu is like monk Okay, oh, yeah. so it's like these small, it's like a small talisman, you know, like they make with cloth, or nowadays kids make it with like just paper, you know. So it's 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 it's, it's a talisman for clear weather that farmers hang hang outside their houses, you know. And like nowadays, like many people just used to, or I don't know how many do it now, but they just hang it outside houses when there's a bad day and they want like clear weather. Okay, it's basically a talisman for clear weather. And there are like there are lots of stories around the origins of teru teru bozu. like some say it originated from like chinese mythology but some say there was a some say there was a japanese monk who went to a village where it was raining and he said and and he said that it won't rain so there there's, there's like a poem you know saying where these farmers are telling the monk you know make tomorrow a sunny day and we'll give you a golden bell make tomorrow a sunny day and we'll give you sake and then the last line is like make tomorrow a sunny day and I'll snip your head off like think funny <laughs> things like that i wouldn't say funny but yeah so it's a very interesting thing how he showed that even even hare onna is a, like it's a real, like they have a yokai called ame onna you know which you see in the rain hmm. and even related to that you, you in japanese like yokai culture you have like hare onna yuki onna you know these different weather personifications of women rain and snow women holy shit bro is holding up a teru teru boss yeah. as we speak Did you make it right now? Yup, no. yup. No, I didn't. Did I did, I did. Uh huh. Yeah, he did. No, I didn't. I did. Well, it's, you know it's raining outside heavily in Mumbai right now, so. You know what's That's weird? By the way, I, I wanted to say yeah. it, but I forgot it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I totally made that on my own. We are moving past that. Was my uh-huh. I made it. Okay. Mm-hmm. It didn't rain while I was watching weathering with you. It rained before. I've had yeah. to go to the store to buy some stuff for dinner. It was raining then. I finished watching it. I think it's raining now. But while I was watching the movie, it didn't rain. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! <laughs> Told you, Hari on nice real. <laughs> That's a very cool. Nice. I don't know the origins, but yeah, Bru made it totally. Yeah, I, I made I made an extra one and gave it to Audi as well. 
Yes. Hmm? Yes, clear. Wait, how, when did you all make this? I made it. I made it now and I gave one to Audi. When did you make it? Could you just show the tag on that? Hmm. Of course. You all haven't told me about this. I didn't know you all had yeah. stuff like this years ago. Uh, there is no tag. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you just put it right over there. Mm-hmm. The, the, these charms that Bro is currently showing us, they they also are there in uh, Malayalam folklore. They are called... They they basically weather, weather spirits, sort of. Oh. And these charms that work in a similar fashion where farmers would hang it outside their homes. Or one mm-hmm. one of these charms would work for the whole household, right? And they'd work. And this this particular charm was given around the time a flood hit the state of Kerala, and these charms are just being passed around just for general good luck and good faith. So yeah, just in connection with your whole ame bos. Teri teru bos. It's the mascot of rebuilding a better Kerala. Ah, that, that, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, wow. The relation is interesting. I had no idea about that. I like that. It, could, yeah. it has survived floods. And uh, for, for you both to authenticate, here is some Malu writing, which I do not understand because I am illiterate in my mother tongue. Or you shall read it out for us. Yeah, I can't read it either. <laughs> I don't know much of my own mother tongue. Sorry. We are all illiterate in our but mother yeah. tongue except for Sid. Yes. But Anyways, yeah, but Sid is a language genius, apparently. So I wouldn't say that. But speaking of language, nice segue, amazing segue. Indeed. Let's talk about the meanings of their names. Hold on, you are some. Oh yeah, if you are anyway in your monologue, yes. Yeah. So if you see Hina's name, Hina Amano. Yeah. Amano means a sky field, yep, which yep. makes a lot of uh, sense, doesn't it? The Amano Genji, Sid. Remember. Genji. Listen. Oh, it's from Get Backers. Yeah, Amano Genji. Holy shit, That's yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, damn. Get Backers episode coming in a while too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it and like I don't know the relation, but the first part of her name means like sun greens, Hina, mm-hmm. the kanji if you see. And Hodaka means high sail. And Morishima means like luxurious island. Which uh, at first... I I don't know what luxurious island is, but if you see the island where he's from, mm. which which is the uh, which is Kozushima, it's a small island off the Bay of Tokyo with like Aogashima. I remember I told you all those yeah, other yeah, small yeah. islands. Beautiful, it's a beautiful island from there, which we see in the end when he goes to back yeah, to study. Yeah. You know, so that's where his or maybe it's some it refers to that. But out of these name meanings, the only thing I could make sense of was sky field. Yeah. No, like even the, if it's luxury, that isn't that what he had in his house? Maybe it's a nod to the fact that he could have lived a very luxurious, comfortable mm-hmm. life, but he chose to leave it because he didn't want to be with his parents. That makes sense. Yeah, I think that make. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, because, because I was I had forgotten about that part. Yeah. Because he they, they, he doesn't say he doesn't tell us why he doesn't want to go back, but mm-hmm. he does seem to. You know, he just seemed to insinuate that he could have lived comf- comfortably over there if he wanted, but he he personally didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like I knew her name was related to the weather in some yeah. way. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's, it's I like how he does. He plays around with names like this. You know, it's an interesting thing. It's another Makoto Shinkai thing he does with his films. You know, it's classic tropes. Yeah. Hmm. What else? What else? Give us more tidbits. Can we talk about the songs? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, Wasn't it also by Radwimps? Yes, it, the whole soundtrack was by Radwimps again. What do you guys think about the song? I don't think the whole thing was by Radwimps. It was. The whole album. Oh, no, like in the karaoke and all, they had different songs, but I'm talking about the main soundtrack. Yeah, the, like there were, there, were, there were two songs where a woman was singing. I think they got uh, this thing. There were there were cameos from this Toko Muira, this artist called Muira Toko. Okay. I think she's she's like she's featured in two of their songs, but the whole album is by Radwimps. I yeah. feel like Radwimps was heavily underutilized this time. I don't think they were underutilized because they there's like a 31 track album soundtrack they made for and the whole they thing. Like in the movie, if they had 31. No, I, because if you see like the pace of Kimi, like of course like Kimi no Nava, because I think that's Radwim's best work. 
किसी की मेरा नाम लाइक द पेस ऑफ द मूवी यू नो द लाइक लॉन्गिंग नेस्ट टू लाइक फाइंड इट बिफोर इट्स लॉस्ट एंड ऑल आई थिंक द द साउंड ट्रैक गोस अलोंग विद दैट बिकॉज़ लाइक मोर अपबीट एंड यू आर चेसिंग यू नो सॉन्ग लाइक दैट लाइक व्हाट शिट व्हेन विल हैपन लाइक देयर इज अ हाई बट इफ यू सी लाइक सॉन्ग्स लाइक दिस लाइक यू नो देयर इज अ सॉन्ग लाइक इज देयर एनीथिंग लव कैन डू दैट्स द नेम ऑफ द सॉन्ग इट्स अबाउट इट लाइक देयर इज जस्ट हिम सिंगिंग सॉफ्टली लाइक विद जस्ट पियानो इन द बैकग्राउंड इट्स लाइक अ वेरी सॉफ्ट song you know low yeah. and you're talking about the sadder moments so i think the soundtrack was supposed to be was designed to be more like low and soft to more no i'm not like, talking about that i liked all the songs the sad moments i think because of that no i liked all the songs i liked the um I, they also had a very radwins like song in the middle somewhere i think when they yeah. started going out for those uh, sunshine this thing sunshine request oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's true so there was a very rad very rad wim song right over there but and i like the song i like the music i still feel they were underutilized in the movie i feel like rad wims had a lot more to contribute towards kimino nava than they did in thinki no ko that's true i think rad wims had more contribution in the whole flow of the movie in kimino nava yeah and, and here they were just adding like soundtrack because even though the main theme is also like really good i don't think it stood out as much as kimino nava song stand out yeah Haunted they're not as dog. memorable my dog is growling at my other dog now <laughs> okay Hope. dog break Hope. shut up for couple what do you, what do you think the kimino nava song set up the tempo for the scenes right but as mm-hmm. here i felt that uh, i think in the sunshine girl the that that section and the first time where they show hodaka living life in tokyo uh, the yeah. were very montage like and i and i really like those two songs out of the entire movie but those were the only two that stood out through and through never was there a point where i was i liked the music along with the visuals and yeah in kimino nawa that, that that was the case every time uh, this thing the popular songs came out the the ones we like the most and we, yeah. we pointed them out later on as well and we kind of hello did already die yeah yeah already died well more editing for you great i'm going to keep all this in no i want to, way, i'm going to take think... a screenshot and i'm going to i'm going to keep this as the <laughs> thumbnail of the video <laughs> oh my god don't is already back i think he's back he's shaking his head oh no his zencaster thing is like it's it's blur it's faded Hello. out so i don't think he's connected to zencaster adi can you hear us not your head up and down hello oh are you do that yeah, yeah. he's back ah, okay. he's back yeah yeah so as i was saying the the music in kimino nawa was more outstanding to say the least whereas here i only found out found that two songs caught my ear and, and that was about it I think the visuals overpowered the music in this movie. No, I I don't I don't think it's like that at all. I liked all the songs. Every song yeah. was like wow, this is good. I want to listen to this. But then he didn't use the same amount of music in this movie as he did in Kimi no Nawa. I want to know how much Rad Wimps had you know air time in Kimi no Nawa. I want to know the total time duration and I want to compare it to the total time duration in time duration in Kimi no sorry in Bedring with you. because yeah. i think there's a large disparity between the two i could i could listen to more music which accompanied the scenes and songs in kimino nawa and i can remember them right now but i cannot remember all the times songs came up in weathering with you yeah another thing i would say is because like most of the weathering with you soundtrack is instrumental so yeah, because maybe, of that yeah. because yeah. kimino nawa has a lot of like really lyrical songs yeah. also so maybe that makes a difference but but even background music it felt very i don't know it felt very empty at a lot of play i really thought radwins would have a larger role to play so that was a little disappointing mm-hmm. i think in this movie the the audio was made to support the visuals and nothing most of the audio anyways was made to support the visuals more so there was no like in kimino nawa the you like both the audio and you like the whole picture that was going on in your head when you were seeing these scenes with the radwim songs but as here i don't know it, or it or what impactful what happened was radwim's got too famous and this guy was like you know what <laughs> i i'm not doing free advertising over here for you so you just make basic music <laughs> i have no basic other basic music huh why Why would, yeah? I mean, uh, the music. I'd, I'd say Kimino Nawa is. I've I haven't heard the yeah. soundtrack yet. I just watched the movie, so I'll give the soundtrack a listen. But my initial 
thoughts are that Kimi no Nawa had a much better soundtrack. I agree with that. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. I think. No, that's yeah. the thing. I I want to listen to the soundtrack of Weathering with You separately, and I want to check it out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because if if it, it if they actually have a lot of songs which I haven't heard or which I haven't paid attention to because there's so much going mm-hmm. on in the movie, then I would like to see if it stands up to Kimi no Nawa. But I but I do like the songs. I do like the music. I thought it was very well done. Yeah. Would you, would you say that the songs are playlist worthy? Uh, yeah, I think the songs are playlist worthy. Definitely, it's just yeah. that because because I don't... we we like starting off you know, some of our playlists with the Kimi no Nawa theme, and I, I, would you say like it's in the same place, or would you say it's like? What are you saying? We don't have Kimi no Nawa. We are not weebs, are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> I know, right? What's Kimi no Nawa, dude? I have no idea what that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, my playlist starts with Lil Pump Pump Dump. I don't know. <laughs> little peep, little peep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the song, I think the songs, I like, of course, everyone's going to compare it <laughs> to that. But even if you see it on its own, I think the songs are nice. But I agree with Bro when he says it didn't have as much impact as it did with Kimi no Nawa. And that's not to say the songs are bad. I just feel yeah, like they were course. intentionally kept to be with very yeah. minimally invasive. Mm-hmm. But... Okay, like, since we anyway go, we've done a lot of it. Let's compare Weathering with You to Kimi no Nawa. What do you guys think when you compare it? What I do you guys want already, to compare? I think we already stated most points yeah. like throughout as we are talking about both the shows. Yeah. But I think the the thing with Kimi no Nawa is it's always it's this mystery and this suspense that that you keep building up in the end, and we get rewarded with this, you know. I would. I don't know how rewarded Bro is with the ending, but you get rewarded with this really good, like one line, small moment ending, which makes it worth it. You know, the whole ex- it's like a roller coaster. Yeah. But even though Tenki no Ko had a good ending and it had a lot of you know a lot of interesting things that happened throughout, and like even though they are the same themes of you know like the the young love theme, you know of these of these teenagers like finding love. from different places he used the same concept of like city life to like country life but in a different more twisted way over here but if you compare it i th- yeah that's what i would say i think kimi no nawa had more of an impact because of the mystery and you know the, yeah. the longing that the viewers had for the characters to meet each other yeah. because over here like in tenki no ko is just like it's it's like he loves they love each other but she has to sacrifice herself like for the greater cause hmm. which is a which is a very impactful concept but i don't think it's as impactful as the mystery that kimi no nawa had if you again, go for the base of the story i would i would disagree there and say it would have it maybe it could have even been more impactful than kimi no nawa if they had done it in a way if they done it in a slightly different way so i'll tell you one problem i think weathering with you face that they couldn't do this as easily mm-hmm. so in kimi no nawa the reason we got so involved with the characters was that they switched bodies and they got that sense of comfort with each other very quickly because they yeah, they're they're switching true. bodies there are no, there are no secrets you you don't yeah. know everything so but also they never met each other yeah but even though they never, they never met each other they know so much and they're very comfortable mm-hmm. with each other while here they had to establish a guy and then they established the girl and then they had to establish them coming together and then doing stuff it's getting closer and then we start feeling for them yeah that's so true that that direction they took just really cut everything short but in, but they had made them meet earlier on in the film and in the half point of the film she disappears and the rest is all about how he how he's desperately trying different things to bring her back hmm. and then she comes back i think would have fixed everything i found wrong with the film But wouldn't that be similar to Kimi no Nawa? I all, that was going to be my first point after you guys finished talking. I think yeah. both movies are the same. They 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 are the exact same. The, the, the names are different. The setting is different, but they're the same. Mm-hmm. It's still it's still that teenage love type of thing. It's still about how one one guy and one girl want to wo- make things work, but there is one sense of the supernatural. Of course. So the yeah. base concept. It's like you know people seeing uh, episode four of Star Wars and then they went and saw episode. Se- uh, six, mm-hmm. uh, and they say it was uh, no, sorry, episode three of five. Star Wars. What are the what are my was what, it? Four. I don't remember. Four, 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 four and seven, four okay. and seven. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was basically the same, right? They just changed mm-hmm. all the characters. 
so True. here it's, again it's the same it's, he's used the same concept but he's made it in a completely different way which is really good i appreciate that i i, mean, I don't have any problems with it but they're the same i think both stories are being compared so much not only because it's the, the one after the other but also because they have so much so many of the same elements there so it's easy uh, to compare it but i think it really stands up on its own would you say that the the way they set up both the characters would you say it's rather generic in the fairy tale sense of it all because even in fairy tales they establish the hero they establish the heroine and then they kind of establish them meeting together and the twist that goes to it, like a cinderella sort of situation right no i think this was i think the way the characters met was fine i mean i have ne- yeah, five for one i've never seen generic. a story where two characters meet and then they're like hey let's use your supernatural abilities to make money <laughs> yeah like that's something i was genuinely surprised because i really thought that you know he'll be like oh let's help people or oh yeah, let's yeah. do this let's do that and then this guy is like let's make money <laughs> i was like i really like, to that shit i would love to do that too if i was there a more yeah, i think it makes a lot of yeah i think they the characters meet also in the, it was it wasn't generic you know it was still like randomly meets her at a mcdonalds and then sees her outside this district you know the guy pulling her in and then yeah, it's all in the same area right so it makes it yeah, more believable yeah. exactly it's like you encounter people in the same area more often and since he was living there yeah and and she he remembers that good gesture you know that he yeah, received at exactly. mcdonald's so yeah yeah because he even says it was the most delicious meal he's had in his life exactly he gave it for free and he also they also show show her brother in the bus so they they establish it's all in the same area that was really well mm-hmm. done at that oh, time oh yeah so. exactly I think he's done a pretty good job yeah. at that showing like this small world within this area in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He's done a very good job with the mm-hmm. whole movie. Just just that just I just think that she came back too easily. That's the only <laughs> thing. But I understand the time restrictions were one were most likely one of the biggest problems he faced because yeah. they, they had to show so much in such a short amount of time. But I don't know. Maybe may or maybe I would have even been happy if if they he had to go try to save her and maybe he had to sacrifice something to get her back because another thing that drove me wrong was they said everything has a price everything has a price everything has a price she paid the price and he went into the same place she was and came back without him having to do anything so there there should have been a price over there for him to pay because i didn't he- I don't know maybe he was trying to say he paid the price of like losing her or so maybe I'm looking too much into it I'm just thinking out loud No here. I think if he has to go into the world that she is in Oh yeah okay up there ha 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 yeah yeah he also needs to pay a price to enter that world and exit it hmm. There's no way he should just be able to jump in and jump out like yep you know that Rick and Morty quick adventure just five minutes jump in <laughs> and out <laughs> <Love> apparently yeah <laughs> but, oh, yeah that's but the only it, that's the only point i found bad like i didn't mm-hmm. i didn't like it too much i thought it could have been done better but otherwise it was price, yeah. yeah otherwise it was really really good i really liked it it, it was mm. on the level of kimino nawa i still think i have a i i still think i have a soft spot for kimino nawa because because of the radwim songs because of the, all this time i've already invested into it and because they didn't get closure <laughs> <laughs> which you like but hate yeah yeah, yeah. I'm just really salty that these two got closure in this movie. It's unfair. That's all. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. I know, right? I think it's cool. Yeah. I had a, I have a, I have a couple of questions. Like, do you think they they say that the Weather Maiden has is meant for one particular village or one city or one country? Hmm. Was that the limit of her power? One country? Because they never they sometimes showed in some scenes. that you know there would be a spot of light in a very large chunk of the city and around it there would just still be darkness yeah that's what that's what they said that you she can only yeah. bring light for a few for a, like a short while in a specific location but then so she has one... to give herself up completely for her to bring back the weather to normal in i know i know but then there was one scene where she stands on top of the building she yeah. uses her power yeah i think a, i think almost the whole city just gets Uh, no no they never show the whole city getting lit they always yeah. show a part of the city getting lit it's always sure? local or like such traditions and customs like a cust- something we do in india like we pray to ganesh or like like indra does something it won't cause a storm in japan cuz such beliefs are always local you know 
So it's not country based ever, as you said. It's always local, and it always happened around her. Like even if you see the scene where she goes to Taki's grandmother's house, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's only in that area, and you see the whole place, you know, hmm, covered yeah. in clouds. Yeah, because uh, in that scene on top of the building, right? I was noticing this, and uh, like when I first noticed it, obviously it meant that the clouds were clearing out in that one spot. But in that on that building scene, the clouds had cleared out. till the end of the ocean like the sun was setting at the time and there were no clouds as far as the eye could see so i figured you know she pulled some op ass move where she just prayed to the sun god and shit and the whole city just got sunlight and i yeah, thought I think, you know, i think the city was- got sunlight only after she gave herself up when she sacrificed herself so does she give like a chunk of a chunk of herself the more she gives the more sun yeah that's what i'm saying they didn't show that properly yeah. see that's why the audience confused because they didn't show it well enough they should have shown it in a way that they're like okay they, she is giving up parts of herself we just know that she can get sunlight but we just don't know what that price was mm-hmm. no but even the even the old like priest talks about it right he talks about the sacrifice that the that the yeah it's just this human sacrifice yeah 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 exactly <laughs> so we knew something was coming but yeah, yeah i I, even, i could predict that easily i mean i'm saying the story yeah. itself was not like a So it wasn't some genius new concept. It was a yeah. concept that was well executed. Mm-hmm. But is that if they had shown her losing small parts of herself, and you start thinking it's okay, you know, it gives you that sense of it's fine. We know where yeah. it is. It's going to be fine. And then she opens her robe and she's like, "Surprise, motherfucker! No torso." <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, "Excuse me, what the fuck? What the fuck just <laughs> happened? It was on her arm." And they were like, "Funny yeah. spots. What happened?" So I, I think, think that's, that's, that part could have just uh, they could have just shown like those some of those fish just floating around uh, like one or two fish floating around at the start. No, they'll just make it seem like she's being stalked by some internet. <laughs> know, but like, but it's sort. not floating around continuously, obviously. Like every now and then there'll just be one fish, then every now and then there'll be more fish coming in, and then you know all of a sudden like half our body is water all of a sudden. And that My, maybe that would have helped the impact. I'm just imagining you with your first kiss and the fish is just a. <laughs> 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 that is weird. I did not don't go there. Yeah. I think it was good without the fish. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And also the uh, also now said you might not like this. I I thought one more place where I think it didn't really go high enough when according to Kimi no Nawa is the weather itself. I think they Kimi no Nawa had a lot more shots. showing a lot more visuals that were striking like the meteors falling and the where, where they fell the crater the mountains all of that made for better frame composites you know the frames looked much better here there were a lot of different frames there were a lot of different things that looked good but i feel like kimino nawa just did it a touch better except yeah, for that's... one thing except for the fireworks show Yeah, of course. Holy shit! That firework show blew my that mind. That was amazing. Because I was trying to, I was trying to figure out how I would do it with all the three D software available, yeah. and I was like, this is going to be a pain in the ass to make. And then he two D drew everything out. That is just crazy. He probably he used a lot of CG and three D for that scene yeah. for sure. Yeah, that that itself was crazy. That yeah. that scene made me go wow. Mm. No, the thing is, I th- about the weather thing. What you're saying makes sense, but also because the the sky here is always cloudy and covered. It's yeah. always gray. Yeah. So I think because of that, you didn't have such because the sky is over there. You can almost see space and meteors yeah, yeah, and yeah. Kimi no Nawa, you know. So you can't. I don't the weather like I think he animated the rain in like a crazy yeah, way. Yeah, the rain was that, animated like, really well. Like, yeah, mind blowing, you know. And I think the, the you didn't have the same impact with the skies because of the concept of the film where it's always cloudy and always covered. It's always grey yeah. and dull. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even talking about the weather. I'm just saying the frame composition was much better in Kimi no Nawa because of all the potential that it had. No, but even if you see the first scene where she's looking out the hospital window, yeah, and you see the grey sky with these like with these like. Little holes of light falling. Yeah, yeah. That looks beautiful. That's an amazing. I'm not saying it did look beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying Kimi no Nawa yeah. had a lot more of those. There were a lot more beautiful frames that you can appreciate rather than Tenki no Ko. Yeah, I think that that makes like, sense. Like even when they show the first shot of the shrine, that that is that is beautiful. When she first yeah. goes to the shrine, I was like, I was like, wow, that's amazing. So there are a lot of good-looking 
shots in the movie just not to the same level i guess mm-hmm. okay anyway we are we are one hour 14 yeah. minutes into this let's so start our we... so if hello are you yeah. there yeah. okay so, so if, let me start talking about the animation hey so, you don't get an animation this thing this time <laughs> it's going to be small because most of it is like from stuff he said keep it up he's just improving upon it but i'm going to talk about a few things i heard him talk about okay, okay just a second if you want to hear sid's thoughts on animation and just go to the kimino nava episode he listen to the whole thing and come back here we can wait anyway go on yeah, we can wait anyway so i'll talk about some names okay so tanaka masayoshi was the character designer for your name Okay. He also designed the same characters for the characters for Thank You No Ko, which makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And Atsushi Tamura was the animation director. He worked on films like Cat Returns, which is a very good Ghibli film. Okay. So we know the animation improved considerably. And I'll, oh, I'll holy shit! Hold well. on, you just you just sprung something in my mind. Sorry, sorry yeah. to disturb. But that cat was really well done in Thank You No Ko. I exactly. love the cat. The cat had a very good the cat had a very good impact and it also like it complemented the characters in a very good way. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the animation itself. I thought the cat animation was done well. Dude, have you seen Shinkai's cat? He has a short on cats. Yeah. A short film, animated short film. Very cat. And he was basically spending time exploring cats and he made that film. You told me that Miyazaki was well known for his animation of cats, right? Yeah, Miyazaki is like god like when it comes to cat animation but shinka has, has a shorty tried on cats yeah and he really likes cats so i think that's why and shinka is also very inspired by miyazaki we'll talk about that now even the cat at the end of the movie where it's become a nice chonk and he's sitting next to suga yeah, and they yeah, both yeah. are like talking to him <laughs> and they make the same expressions i loved it it's a, yeah the cat is a really good like it's a good character in the film yeah. it complements it well uh i think even the so most of the cast and crew is the returning crew from your name he used the same crew yeah. because you can see the similarities yeah. right in the production and he used the same method you know of like a mixture of cg yeah, and real yeah. life because you see all the real locations and his animation yeah. but in, in this film like i saw an interview where we stop where a person like asked him about like the great directors you know like satoshi kon mamoru osoda miyazaki and like so apparently he was talking about like those are like his favorite directors he look up to he looks up to them and wants to be like them some days what wow. he says okay wow. a guy like makoto shinkai wow. he says like i told you about this film before like satoshi kon has this film called tokyo godfathers yeah. which is like a legendary film i love that film so he says like he he says it's one of his favorite films and he got the inspiration of how tokyo looks from that and he wanted wow. to make it as live like from that film Wow. which is amazing i think he I, you can see him trying to do that also like he he saw hoso that as weather cuz hoso that is a lot of good films like both children girl who left to try he has a new film called mirai which looks very similar to thank you no ko i will say mirai it's about a girl who goes up to the sky hmm. okay. but you know there's a scene he talks about where there's snow falling you know in yeah. the sun he said he was inspired by mamoru hoso that's work for that and he says he likes how he says miyazaki is like his favorite director and he hopes to like get to his level someday wow. and he says like he loves how miyazaki has like these amazing like bright stories and his characters like take on the world no matter how small or incapable they are wow. he likes that aspect and also if you see like i don't know if you notice this like you know the rain form these monsters like yeah, this yeah. big monster that falls and the, i think those were very ghibli esque yeah, characters yeah, yeah, and things that he so. put yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I think so. That's very interesting because you can. He talks about his inspiration and like where he comes from, and he aims to be like them someday. So you can see him going in that direction. Yeah. What were those? What were those things supposed to be? Those blobs of water, sort of. I think they were just trying to show how. They yeah. Her think... using her powers has a mm-hmm. fight to pay. So basically, what he was, was just personifying yeah. weather into these creatures. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Basically, she was keeping the creatures away, and that stopped the. She stopped them from falling on the ground. Mm-hmm. so they get caught in the at, at, in the regular atmosphere and they fall at random places when they can't sit up anymore that's what i took out of it mm. yeah there was no really. there was no explanation as such right for these no no this they are no, no this he left open ended <laughs> but i think it makes sense it's a more supernatural like thing like you know showing these elements as like creatures yeah 
think that think makes, made sense more, to me. The last scene, it. they could have shown Hina, look at him with a, look at this guy with a, like, you know, a surprised face with a little hint of anger and then yeah. end it there. And everyone's like, is she <laughs> angry? Does she hate him? Is she, are they going to be okay? But no. Has the last scene, they were running to meet like, uh, Hol- like Bollywood movie style. They yeah. were running towards each other. <laughs> but I think, what do you think about the scene where like Hina vanishes? You know, the first time she goes missing, yeah, yeah. with the with the flow of the wind and everything. Oh, like that. Mm. Tina vanishing was like a very eh moment for me because I was like, I know it's gonna yeah. happen. Exactly. He's going to sleep, she's going to go, and then yeah. he's gonna wake up and be like, Oh no, she gone. And that's exactly <laughs> what happened. So it didn't really strike me as a it was like okay. No, I was like, it's fine. Yeah, and if we compare this to your name also, like here we actually see like Hina vanish and go away but in your name as far as I remember you see Taki searching for Mitsuha and like yeah. figuring it out and we are figuring figure, like there's no sudden like gone thing you know yeah. slowly uncovers which uh, I yeah. think also we can talk about yeah I think we can we can compare it to the point where both the both the characters in your name finally meet and then mm-hmm. uh, Mia, Mia what's her name what uh, Hina no, 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 in your name, the girl's name. Mitsuya. Mitsuha. Mitsuha. And when Mitsuha finally just vanishes, right? It's, a, it's like a punch to us in the chest. Mm-hmm. We just didn't expect that of all things to happen. Whereas here, they they kind of built it up for us. So, oh, shit. Exactly. Good points. Good points. <laughs> Hello. Yes, sir. Do you make yeah. a lot of sense? <laughs> Whereas here, so, Ha, basically, yeah, they, they built it up uh, for us over here and we kind of expected mm-hmm. it to happen towards the end. We didn't expect that ending in Kimi no Nawa and that kind of set that movie on a much higher pedestal than it did for mm-hmm. Kimi no Ko. No, it's, it's not only about that, right? Again, I go, I'm, I'm repeating myself a lot, but it was about the consequences of their action. This guy and, and the struggle that the guy had to go through. The, now both both these girls are damsel in distress. Even though they they don't really need it, both of them can take care of themselves better than the guy can take care of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> but in Kimi no Nawa, the guy has to go through so much stuff. Like Taki goes through so much shit, go, becomes desperate, goes to an abandoned town, runs to the mountains. In the mountains, he goes to a cave, all based on a dream that he saw, and it worked. Mm. And then he was like, "Oh shit, it's worked!" And then it stops working immediately afterwards. But all the, he does all that just to get one chance, just to hopefully get a few hours to try to save the city. And that's exactly what happens with Mitsuha. He, he, Taki doesn't know, right? He, he, yeah. he doesn't know what's going to happen, but he manages to get into Mitsuha's body. He goes, he does that, does his shit, and then manages to save it. And that is, that is what I'm talking about. He had to do all that effort. While here, th- this, guy, this guy didn't have to go through effort because of because of her disappearing, he had to go through efforts because of his own problems in general. Hmm. He, yeah, his own problems came in the way of him trying to save her. Yeah, exactly. So it's not yeah. like there were any external things that he had to struggle through them just to get. It. They show him running across the tracks, but man, it did was he called called it on himself, you know. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, so he, all he had to do was escape the police, who who everyone was fighting for him. Walk up to the shrine and be like, oh God, please. And that's it. He got it. But getting to the shrine wasn't that easy. <laughs> yeah. Getting to the shrine wasn't easy. But <laughs> yeah. out of the shrine floated, flew like a flew like he's been doing it for years, went straight down, picked her up and came back. Also, there was one small thing that triggered the hell out of me. He had <laughs> oh handcuffs God. on. Huh? He had handcuffs on. One handcuff was on him. Yeah, yeah, uh, he did. The other so- one was floating the entire time. Uh, she was floating away from him. Their hands were slipping. Just put the other hand on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just dude. Went, went to show that there was just so yeah. crazy in the moment. That it yeah, dude, I'll drop you from a sky with handcuffs and let's see if handcuffs are the first thing you think about. If you drop me from a musical sky where I can float and fly, then I definitely think about it. <laughs> You'll be like, what the fuck is happening to me? I think so imagine, imagine. Okay. <laughs> If, if you if you throw me, okay, but let's say you throw me and you throw away my Luffy figurine, okay, yeah. and I jump after it. I'm like, no, you must be close to me. And I definitely handcuff that if I have to. 
I think the Luffy figure is the last thing you'll be thinking about. <laughs> no, I'd be like, Luffy figurine, save it! I'll try to throw it back at you. <laughs> oh my god, of I course. I think the Luffy figurine will be in five different pieces while you're getting face, uh, you're getting air in your face and you're just worried about what will happen in your reach. <laughs> no, who cares about what will happen? It's about saving the other thing. Of yeah. course. We'll take care of it for you, don't worry. You yes. can sacrifice yourself. Yes. We won't come to save you. We'll that's save okay. the figurine. That's what that, yeah. I go out true anime style. <laughs> of course. But anyway, we're getting off topic. What recommendations mm-hmm. do we have for people based on this? Kimi no Nava, watch our podcast right after watching it. Yes, that's the best recommendation you can give. Because, but, we, because we talk about Kimi no Nava and then we give you recommendations based on Kimi no Nava. So you get more recommendations and you get to hear our thoughts about it. Yeah. And all he says the story is good. Yeah, exactly. I would say other like I still tell I would still recommend watching Shinkai's old works. But if you want to watch some of the stuff we mentioned, like like I I talked about similarities to like in concept wise to Japan getting destroyed and like flooding, similar to USA's Japan Six Twenty Twenty, which is on Netflix right now. You can go watch it. It's very like dark and it's pretty crazy. I would say it's like. Yuasa's work, but it's it's a pretty interesting ride. So I would say you you, you should watch that. Also, you should watch uh, Hosoda's works like Wolf Children, Girl Who Leapt Through Time. Those are like classic Japanese films if you're getting into Japanese films. And you should also watch Satoshi Kon's Tokyo Godfather. It's one of my favorite films. And even Shinkai likes it, so you should watch it. Well, there you go. Those are your yeah. recommendations, Audi. You're going to watch all that and report to us tomorrow. Uh-huh. Also, I have a bomb to drop that I just found out today. What? The Hollywood is remaking your name in America. Oh God! Uh, with a Native American girl and a guy from Chicago. Oh my God! Mark Webb is directing it and J.J. Abrams is producing it. Yeah, it doesn't exist, dude. What can I say? Who is? And Shinkai read the script and all he said was it's interesting, but because at first he was like that's weird, but it's gonna be like. It's good. Apparently, it's gonna be the same concept, but like with a very westernized. I don't know. I'm just. That's all I wanted to say. I think it's the weird. eastern I, I aspect know. of it was what really what was the charm of the film. Yeah. We didn't watch it to see cities. We watched it to see rural Japan and what they can do with rural Japan. And the Japanese like beliefs and customs yeah. and everything that comes together. Like it, I don't. I don't know. I don't like. You can call me pessimistic. But I don't know if it can be re. I don't. I. I think it's going to destroy the film. But let's. I'll Is be it going live in action? No expectations. Yeah, yeah, live action. I'm going in with no expectations at all. Yeah. Are you even going to watch it? No, of course not. Are you are going to watch yeah. it. You are going to tell me if I if I should watch it or if I should not watch it. I'm going to watch it with super super low expectations, and I'm going to tell you not to watch it. I'm yeah. predicting the future here. <laughs> I think they're just trying to force the same Eastern aspect that Kimi no Nawa had. With the whole mm-hmm. Native American thing, see that's why that's probably why they are going with the whole Native American character in the first place because they don't want to, you know, play around with other nationalities as such. So they're just trying to get this other nationality inside the country, sort of, and they're trying to play around with that and be, you know, be like rural and urban, and that's the angle they're going with it. They're trying to basically, they're Kimi no Nawa had the. setting of rural and urban uh, japan whereas here they're trying to be lazy about it and just stick with uh, native american and you know white american dude it's i, I don't know like... what's the it's not necessary like they didn't need to make this film dude yeah in the first place yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this should have been said for the kimi on our podcast said you didn't do your homework at that time yeah i found out and dude i'm telling you like don't stop believing or something is going to be the soundtrack for yeah. this film <laughs> cuz it makes sense Yeah, but yeah, maybe they'll get Radbin to weird. produce music again. I don't know. If they use the same music that's there in the Japanese one, they are sued. But you're gonna sue them, huh? Personally, sued. <laughs> of course, all the way from here. But a little salty if you can't hear it already. You know me. I like to end on a good note. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful movie. Awesome. Very enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. And with can that, we, we can close to. Oh, Sid, what are yeah. we doing next week? Since last week we talked about Death Note, we're going to talk about their second masterpiece, Bakuman, next Ooh. week. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to talk about the manga, not the anime. 
because Although I would like to mention one thing about the anime in the manga because it's very there's a one thing about the anime which is very important to note. But you'll discover that next week. Hey, yes. hey not um, today. Yes. <laughs> Wait for it, I guess. Yes. Anyway, this is Weeb One Hundred One. I'm Bru. I'm Sid. And I'm Audi. Goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. Sayonara. <laughs> no, that has to stop. That is not stopping. <laughs>